Oh, $20. I wanted a peanut. $20 can buy many peanuts. Explain how. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the funniest things done by or to Springfield's most popular residents. Dad, you killed the zombie Flanders. You was a zombie? Number 20, Action Hero Escape, Homer Batman. Who knew attending a candy convention would be so dramatic? After not so subtly stealing the gummy Venus de Milo, Homer and Marge have to hastily make a break for it. Now, this is going to take all my skill. <laughs> ah! Hunt! Hunt! Run, Marge! Save the booty! After him! He has hey, got it! Now, this must be one valuable gummy as pretty much everyone stops what they're doing to give chase. Things take an unexpectedly hilarious turn when, just before exiting, Homer kicks a Buzz Cola out of a vending machine and mixes it with Pop Rocks to create an impromptu explosive device. <laughs> See you in hell, Candy Boys! The sequence ends with Homer slow-mo diving out of the way of the explosion. It's utterly over the top and ridiculous, but we love it. Number 19. Pulling himself out of a tar pit. Bart gets an elephant. With no way of taking care of Bart's elephant, Stampy, Homer decides to sell him to an ivory dealer. Dad, you can't do this. Stampy is my friend. Don't worry, son. I'll get you a new elephant. I'll take that one, too. Done. All right, I'll be back in the morning to pick up Stampy. Here's the keys. Elephants don't have keys. Well, just keep these, then. Obviously, not an ideal setup. Bart decides to run off with Stampy. The rest of the family go out looking for the pair, and everyone ends up at the Springfield Tar Pits. Homer accidentally ends up in the tar pit, and when the others scramble to pull him out, he insists he can do it himself. No, that's okay. I'm pretty sure I can struggle my way out. First, I'll just reach in and pull my legs out. Now, I'll pull my arms out with my face. Dad! His calm demeanor while trying to pull himself out of a dangerous situation, only to completely fail, just heightens the comedy of the scene. Thankfully, Stampy is there to rescue him. Number 18. Posing as Mr. Burns' mother, Homer the Smithers. Waylon Smithers didn't think there'd be any harm by having Homer replace him as Mr. Burns' assistant. What do I do in case of fire? Sorry, can't hear you. Oh, just my luck. He turned out to be wrong, as during his time away, Mr. Burns learned to be self-reliant thanks to Homer and was fired. To get his job back, Smithers has Homer transfer a call from Mr. Burns' estranged mother so he can jump in and save the day. Homer accidentally disconnects the call and has to pose as the Burns matriarch. Hello, Mr. Burns. This is your mother. No. Gah. Oh, hello, Mater. Um, sorry about pulling the plug on you and all. Uh his impersonation has us laughing every time as his voice sounds nowhere near someone who is 122 years old. But he also doesn't know Mr. Burns' first name. Son, this is Mrs. Burns. I just called to say I don't love you. You are a bad son, Montel. So, ah! impersonate my mother, will you? Number 17, finding his exact double, fear of flying. After Homer's prank is poorly received by his friends, he's banned from Moe's Tavern. How many people want Homer banned from this place for life? Yeah! yeah! Oh, come on, everybody. This bar is like a tavern to me. Yeah, sorry, Homer. You should have thought of that before you gave me the old sugar me do. He tries to find a new place to hang out and drink with no luck. Soon, we see a character who suspiciously looks like Homer in disguise, trying to sneak back into Moe's. Greetings, good man. Might I trouble you for a drink? Oh, get out of here, Homer. Homer? Who is Homer? My name is Guy Incognito. Mo, Barney, and others don't buy the disguise and violently toss the man out. What's brilliant about this bit is that it's not actually Homer, as he comes across his double laying on the sidewalk. He doesn't dwell on the fact too long, though, as he's distracted by a dog with a puffy tail. <gasps> oh my god, this man is my exact double! <gasps> That dog has a puffy tail! <laughs> ear puff! Ear puff! If we came across a copy of ourselves, 
We'd have more questions, but that's just us. Number 16, robbing the Quickie Marts, the Cartridge family. Marge is concerned about her family's safety following a citywide riot. To quell her fears, Homer buys a handgun. She's less than impressed and is completely against having any weapons in the house. I'm sorry, Homer. No weapons. A gun is not a weapon, Marge. It's a tool. Like a butcher knife or a harpoon or uh, uh, an alligator. You just need more education on the subject. Homer insists on keeping the weapon and proceeds to bring it everywhere with him. He walks into the Quickie Mart with it and Apu believes it's a robbery. Homer fantasizes what his life would be like if he robbed the Quickie Mart. Oh, Apu, I would never. Or would I? I've already gone this far. I wonder what my life would be like if I robbed the Quickie Mart. It apparently involves him becoming a senator and involves Marge go-go dancing while sitting in a rocking chair. Not only is the absurdity of his daydream funny, but when he decides to go through with it, he's already driving away. I'll do it. I'll rob the Quickie Mart. All right, put your... Don't! Oh, well, I'll rob it next time. Number 15, causing a lie detector to explode. The Springfield Files. Homer's paranormal sightings attract the attention of the FBI. There's been another unsubstantiated UFO sighting in the heartland of America. We've got to get there right away. Well, gee, Mulder, there's also this report of a shipment of drugs and illegal weapons coming into New Jersey tonight. <sighs> I hardly think the FBI is concerned with matters like that. Although it's nothing to be concerned about, as it's agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully from the X-Files who arrive in Springfield to investigate further. They present Homer with a lineup of candidate aliens, but none are what he saw. Scully then attempts to administer a lie detector test to Homer, and after explaining the procedure, she confirms if he understands. He says yes, and the machine blows up. Now we're going to run a few tests. This is a simple lie detector. I'll ask you a few yes or no questions, and you just answer truthfully. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> Homer confidently responded but blatantly didn't understand what Scully said makes this such a memorable gag. Number 14. Meeting George Harrison Homer's Barbershop Quartet Meeting a big-name celebrity is bound to get anyone excited. At a Grammy after-party, Homer encounters former Beatle George Harrison. Then came the greatest thrill of my life. Oh. Hello, Homer. I'm George Harrison. Naturally, he's in shock, but in an excellent subversion of our expectations, Homer's awe isn't with meeting Harrison, but rather he wants to know where Harrison got his brownie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where did you get that brownie? Over there, there's a big pile of them. Once he points out there's a table full of them, Homer proceeds to gorge himself. Harrison took the encounter in stride as he comments that Homer is a nice fellow. Wow, what a nice fellow. Number 13 using a pelican to make cement. Missionary impossible. In order to get out of trouble for scamming PBS, Homer is sent to Micronesia to do missionary work. Of course, he's the least qualified person to take on such work. He decides that the people of the community he's watching over need to have fun. Look, the point is I want to help, but you don't need a well or a chapel or an immunization center. What you need is a little razzle-dazzle. He has them begin a new construction project. While overseeing the work, he notes that pelicans can be used as cement mixers. Using the logic that on the Flintstones, various animals were used to perform various work-related tasks. Now, if the Flintstones has taught us anything, it's that pelicans can be used to mix cement. Come on, little friend, make a wisecrack. You know, it's a living, that sort of thing. Oopsie. Here, that doesn't play out as the pelican simply falls over and dies. It's a bit dark, but extremely funny. Number 12. Boogeyman in the House, Springfield, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Legalized Gambling. Springfield legalizes gambling, and surprisingly, Marge becomes a regular at playing the slots. Her absence from home means Homer's in charge, which is never a good idea. Lisa awakens from a nightmare and tells Homer she dreamed the boogeyman was after her. I know it's absurd, but I dreamed the boogeyman was after me, and he's ah! like... Boogeyman! You nail the window shut! I'll get the gun! Like any reasonable parent, he completely overreacts. He wakes up Bart to inform him that a boogeyman or boogeymen may be in the house. Marge returns home to a chaotic scene with everyone barricaded in the bedroom out of fear. 
Clearly, you can't let Homer's imagination run wild, but on the plus side, we get this laugh out loud moment. What happened here? Oh, nothing, Marge. Just a little incident involving the boogeyman. Of course, none of this would have happened if you had been here to keep me from acting stupid. Number 11, using reverse psychology. Saturdays of Thunder. Homer isn't always the most involved parent with his kids, and after taking a short quiz about parenting, he realizes there's a lot he doesn't know about Bart. In an effort to strengthen his relationship with his son, he wants to assist Bart in building a soapbox derby racer, but Bart insists he doesn't need help. Bart, I'm going to help you build that racer. Thanks, but I'm almost done. Why don't you get back on the couch and watch TV? Okay. No, I'm going to do it. Sorry, Dad, but three-time soapbox derby champion Ronnie Beck never needed his dad's help. Homer reads in a book that using reverse psychology will get Bart to accept his help. In a conversation held with his brain, Homer thinks it's too complicated. Homer's brain tells him not to use reverse psychology, prompting Homer to use it. Don't you get it? You gotta use reverse psychology. Oh, that sounds too complicated. Okay, don't use reverse psychology. All right, I will. The moment is a wonderfully humorous way to demonstrate the technique. It not only works on Homer, but it also works on Bart. Number 10, Indiana Jones spoof. Bart's friend falls in love. On a regular basis, The Simpsons will poke fun at popular movies with hysterical results. This episode opens with one of the show's absolute best parodies. Bart assumes the role of Indiana Jones, attempting to escape with Homer's jar of change. Why, you little... It's Homer who steals the scene, however, as he chases Bart down the stairs only to trip and fall, essentially becoming a human boulder. Wearing nothing but his tidy whities Homer continues to pursue Bart and even ruins his garage door in the process. We also get to witness his fantastic ape impression as he watches Bart escape with his money. <laughs> Number 9. Dental Plan Last Exit to Springfield To his credit, Homer almost always acts in his family's best interests. Homer, Lisa needs braces. Don't worry. We won a dental plan in the strike of 88. Sometimes it just takes him a while to leap into action. Ecstatic about receiving a free keg of beer at work in exchange for surrendering the company dental plan, Homer lines up only to hear Marge's voice in his head, reminding him that Lisa needs braces. Dental plan! Lisa needs braces! Dental plan! Lisa needs braces! As Homer ponders the connection between the dental plan and Lisa, the guys drop a pencil in his butt crack. Regaining his train of thought, Homer finally realizes that he needs the dental plan, setting the stage for one of the best episodes in the entire series. If we give up our dental plan, I'll have to pay for Lisa's braces! People, stop! We can't give up our dental plan! Number 8. Stealing Moe's Car Dumbbell Indemnity if you're planning to commit insurance fraud, it may not be the best decision to give Homer Simpson an important role in your scheme. While I'm on a boat with the perfect alibi, you steal my car and park it on the railroad tracks. Then when a 10:15 train comes along, wham! Insurance company pays off 5,000 clams, I keep showing Renee the sweet life. That is exactly the mistake Mo makes. All Homer has to do is park Moe's car on the train tracks, but naturally he gets distracted by a drive-in movie. Missing the train, Homer improvises and attempts to drive the car off a cliff. His effort to jump out of the car fails in hilarious fashion. Homer, you genius! <laughs> Geronimo! <laughs> Homer somehow survives the crash, but immediately emerges from the water to several police guns pointed at him. The cat burglar outfit doesn't exactly help his case. Number 7. Stupid Sexy Flanders Little Big Mom One of the best recurring gags on the show is Homer's hatred of his neighbor, Ned Flanders. And this is easily one of the funniest moments between the two. Hitting the slopes, Homer runs into his arch frenemy, who's wearing an outfit that leaves little to the imagination. Don't hurt me! Here's my wallet! <laughs> Hi, diddly ho! Shoots in boots! <gasps> Flanders? That suit's a little revealing, isn't it? Well, it allows for maximum mobility. 
feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. This causes Homer to lose control on his skis. He attempts to remember the advice his ski instructor gave him. Unfortunately, he can only remember his encounter with Flanders and his sculpted bottom in that tight ski jumpsuit. If you ever get into trouble, all you need to do is... Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid sexy Flanders. Number six, BBQ Pit Rage. Mom and Pop Art. To say Homer never has been an expert at building things is an understatement. In this classic scene that displays Homer's anger and stupidity, he attempts to build a barbecue pit. That wasn't so hard, was it, honey? Dad, I really need to rest my back. Okay, sweetie. Daddy will take over. Things get off to a rocky start when he immediately spills all of his supplies into wet cement, and it only goes downhill from there. Gotta build fast. Cement drying! All right, let's see. Uh, English side ruined. Must use French instructions. Le Grill? What the hell is that? The show tries to fool the viewer for a second as Homer stares at a beautiful constructed pit. That's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? I don't. Why? Why must life be so hard? Honestly, though, did anyone really fall for that? We immediately see that Homer's pit is a downright disaster, sending him into a hilarious fit of rage. Number five, it's a Geo. Homer loves Flanders. We return to the Flanders Homer rivalry for this classic moment. Unlike their usual encounters, however, this time Homer is actually desperate to hang out with Flanders, and it's Nettie trying to avoid his neighbor. Hey, what's up for today, Nettie? Ah, uh, uh, Homer, we're gonna visit the boy's grandmother. Family only, you know? Right, no reporters. No, I, I, I mean, just the Flanders family. Oh, okay. Flanders attempts to escape an offer for a quick nine at the pitch and putt, despite the limitations of his car. In a hilarious spoof of Terminator 2, Homer chases the car down and latches on using his golf clubs. Us. I'm scared! <laughs> Come on, man, move this thing! I can't! It's a Geo! <laughs> Flanders is eventually able to shake him off the car, but even this doesn't deter Homer, who simply chalks it up to a misunderstanding. I guess he didn't see me. Number four, King Size Homer saves the day. King Size Homer. Only Homer Simpson would gain even more weight in order to claim disability and work from home. I'm pleased to dedicate this remote work terminal. It will allow a safety inspector here to perform his duties from home. And so, excelsior to you, Mr. What's the name of this gastropod? Simpson, sir, one of your chair moisteners from Sector 7G. That's the main storyline in this episode. As Homer gets out of the plant's new exercise program by putting on almost 60 extra pounds. Naturally, Homer neglects his responsibilities and his reliance on a drinking bird to cover for him results in a near nuclear meltdown. Homer attempts to save the town and hilarity ensues as he hijacks an ice cream truck and drives to the plant. Ironically, Homer's weight increase actually saves the day as he falls into the tube and blocks the gas with his body, earning him a medal. I think it's ironic that Dad saved the day while a slimmer man would have fallen to his death. And I think it's ironic that for once Dad's butt prevented the release of toxic gas. Heart! Number three, Space Chips, Deep Space Homer. If our last entry proved anything, it's that Homer loves his food. In this episode, Homer somehow finds himself in space with Buzz Aldrin and Race Banyan. It's beautiful. It's the most awe-inspiring sight I have ever seen. Giver of life, mother of us all. Unable to simply enjoy the majestic view on its own, Homer reveals that he smuggled a bag of potato chips on board. Due to the lack of gravity, they immediately spread around the spacecraft threatening to clog the instruments. Ever the hero, Homer releases his seatbelt and floats around, eating them one by one. With the music echoing Stanley Kubrick's iconic film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I'll take care of this. Of course, this only creates more problems as Homer crashes into an ant colony. Number two. The Land of Chocolate. Burns Verkaufen der Kraftwerk. 
After Mr. Burns sells the power plant to German investors, they immediately evaluate all of the employees, including Homer. You've been safety inspector for two years. What initiatives have you spearheaded in that time? Uh, all of them? I see. Then you must have some good ideas for the future as well. I sure do. During the interview, the Germans remind Homer that they are from the land of chocolate immediately sending him into a dreamlike sequence where everything is made out of chocolate. He prances around with chocolate bunnies, chows down on chocolate raindrops, and even takes a bite out of a chocolate dog. <laughs> what makes this scene even funnier is how excited Homer gets when he sees a sign for a store selling half-priced chocolate, despite the fact that he could just eat the whole town for free. Unfortunately for Homer, the sequence distracts him for 10 minutes, costing him his job. Hey, sorry. We were talking about chocolate? That was 10 minutes ago. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Falling into Springfield Gorge – Bart the Daredevil This scene sums up Homer Simpson to a T, a caring father who loves his son, even if he doesn't always show it. After finding out Bart's plan to jump Springfield Gorge on a skateboard, Homer does everything he can to stop him, eventually convincing his son not to make the jump. If you make this promise, you have to keep it. Why? Because if you don't, I'll never believe anything you say ever again. Oh, come on. I mean it, boy. Well, okay, Dad. I promise. I will not jump Springfield Gorge. Unfortunately, Homer's happiness is short-lived as he realizes he's actually on Bart's skateboard heading towards the gorge. Despite his momentary belief that he may actually make it, Homer ultimately falls into the gorge. Of course, things don't end there as the gurney carrying Homer into the ambulance rolls out and sends him back down the gorge a second time. What's your favorite Homer Simpson moment? Let us know in the comments. These uniforms suck. Bart, why do you pick up words like that? Yeah, Mo, that team sure did suck last night. They just plain sucked. I've seen teams suck before, but they were the suckiest bunch of sucks that ever sucked. Homer, watch your mouth. I gotta go. My damn wiener kids are listening. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.